here's what's going on. I've got a compact disc, and the compact disc encodes music into a spiral of pits. And those pits, when I look at them close up with a scanning electron microscope, form lines that are spaced apart, just a little bit further apart than a wavelength of visible light. Now, when light hits a set of lines like this, it is bent to the side at an angle. And each different wavelength of light is bent at a different angle. Red light is bent more than blue light. So when I put a light source onto the compact disc, each different wavelength of light bounces off at a different angle. Let me show you how it works. I have a compact disc, and I have an incandescent light bulb that puts out all wavelengths of visible light. So as I reflect, the light comes from the incandescent light, bounces off the compact disc, and each different color bounces at a different angle. So you see the spectrum of light with all colors present, red through blue. You might notice that this is a tiny light source. And many light sources around us are quite broad, like a fluorescent light fixture. And in order to get a good spectrum, we need to have a small light source. That's why in our tube, we have a slit. Well, you might think that, well, a slit isn't tiny. Well, a pinhole would work, but it's actually hard when you're looking through this tube to point a pinhole at a light source. By having the slit, I make it restricted enough to give me a good spectrum, but much easier to point at and find a light source. In summary, we have the compact disc with lines in it, making a diffraction grating that breaks the light up into its component colors. We have a tube to shield against extraneous light sources. We have a narrow slit to restrict the light coming in to a small source. And we have an eye hole that lets me look in and see the spectrum of light.